Hey everyone, today we're going to take you on a journey. I'll explain all the physics in eight minutes. Let's get started. Let's go. It all started with an apple falling from a tree. Yes, the apple you know. According to the famous story, Isaac Newton wondered why an apple fell down instead of up. Honestly, what would you have done? You probably would have just said, oh, a free apple, and moved on, right? But Newton didn't think like us. He decided to solve the massive secret behind this simple event. And here it is, the cornerstone of physics, the law of universal gravitation. The formula for this law is as follows. What does this mean? Don't panic, I'll explain it right away. This formula calculates the gravitational force that every two massive objects in the universe, in other words everything, exert on each other. This means there's a gravitational force between you and your phone, the earth and the moon, and even you and the chair at the next table. How big is this force? The bigger the mass is, the bigger the force. The more the distance between them increases, the more the force decreases. So this formula is what keeps the earth in orbit around the sun and what causes time in the oceans due to the moon. With this formula, Newton showed that gravity isn't unique to Earth, it's valid throughout the entire universe. And of course, there are Newton's laws of motion. First law, unless an external force is applied to an object, that object will either remain at rest or continue to move at a constant velocity. We also call this the principle of inertia. So when you roll a ball, if there were no air friction and other forces, that ball would keep rolling forever. Second law, this is where the formula comes from, F equals MA. This states that the force applied to an object is directly proportional to the object's mass and the acceleration it gains. In other words, when you push a car, the harder you push, force. The faster the car accelerates, but the heavier the car's mass, the less it accelerates with the same force. It's that simple. Third law, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. The more you press your hand against a wall, the more you struggle, because the wall applies just as much reaction force as the action force you apply. Actually, it's not that simple or insignificant. The basic principle of launching rockets into space is this law. Rocket engines push air downwards, and the air pushes the rocket upwards. With these laws, Newton laid the foundations of modern physics. We could now explain everything. At least, we thought so. After Newton, the scientific stage was suddenly bustling. Everyone was competing to discover new things. First there's Thomas Young. In 1701, he conducted the famous double slit experiment. This experiment showed that light behaves not only like a particle, but also like a wave. So light is both a particle and a wave. This discovery shocked the entire scientific community and was one of the first important steps on the path to modern quantum physics. Then comes Alessandro Volta. He worked so hard that he discovered a chemical reaction in a battery generates an electric current. The ancestor of all modern batteries exists thanks to him. Don't forget to give a shout out to Volta when the battery in your TV remote dies. Following him, Hans Christian Ersted noticed that an electric current passing through a wire moved a compass needle. At that moment, he understood there was a relationship between electricity and magnetism. And ever since that day, all electric motors and generators have been based on this simple principle. And of course, that cool named guy, Andre Marie Ampere. He took Ersted's discovery further, finding that an electric current creates a magnetic field and laying the foundation for today's electric motors. Without him, we would have no vacuum cleaners or electric bikes. Next up is Michael Faraday. Despite having no formal scientific education, what? He didn't stop and discovered that magnetism could generate electricity, so he essentially reversed the principles of what we call electric motors and generators and showed how electricity could be produced. Faraday's discoveries allowed electrical energy to enter our homes and factories. While Newton was sitting in the shade of a giant tree, another genius was trying to solve another mystery, electricity and magnetism. These were two seemingly independent forces, that is, until James Clerk Maxwell arrived. Maxwell understood that these two forces were actually two mischievous children of the same family. He developed a set of formulas, Maxwell's equations, that brought them together. One of the most important results was this, light. Yes, light. Light was actually an electromagnetic wave, electric fields and magnetic magnetic fields generate each other, allowing the wave to travel through a vacuum. The speed of light could also be derived from these formulas. This was an incredible discovery. Wow! Incredible! We now understood the entire electromagnetic spectrum, from radio waves to microwaves, x-rays to ultraviolet rays. All the wireless communication technologies we use today, Wi-Fi, cell phones, radio, were made possible by these equations. 
Just when everyone thought all the great secrets of physics were solved, a crazy-haired genius stepped onto the stage. Albert Einstein. He was obsessed with Maxwell's discovery about the speed of light. He said that the speed of light was always the same, everywhere, for every observer. What did this mean? It contradicted Newton's laws. If the speed of light was constant, then time and space couldn't be. To solve this problem, Einstein put forth his theory of special relativity. The most famous result of this theory, and perhaps the most famous equation of all time, was... What does this equation mean? In short, energy, E and mass, M, are actually different forms of the same thing. Mass carries a huge energy potential. C, C squared is the speed of light squared. The speed of light is such a large number that even a tiny bit of mass, M, can be converted into an explosive amount of energy. E, nuclear energy and nuclear bombs were made possible precisely because of this equation. So even that tiny crumb of bread you ate for breakfast has a massive amount of energy hidden inside it. But Einstein didn't stop there, he also questioned old Newton's theory of gravity. According to Newton, masses attracted each other, but how? Einstein found a different way, the theory of general relativity. According to Einstein, masses warped space-time. It's like the dent a bowling ball makes on a stretched trampoline. That dent is what creates what we call the force of gravity. The sun warps space-time, causing the Earth to orbit around it. Black holes warp space-time so much that not even light can escape from them. So what Newton called the force of attraction was actually a phenomenon Einstein described as the warping of space-time. With the theory of relativity, we solved some of the universe's biggest secrets. Great. Good job. But at the same time, things were getting really complicated in the world of the smallest things, atoms and particles. It was at this point that the Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger appeared on the scene. At the time, there was a strange theory that said we couldn't know for sure where particles like electrons were. They were only a wave of probability. To challenge this, Schrödinger developed a famous formula called the Schrödinger equation, which describes how a particle changes over time. What is this? You probably don't understand it. This equation describes all possible states of an atom or particle as a wave of probability. With this equation, you can calculate not where an electron is around the atom, but the probability of where it might be. No certainty, just probabilities. To show how ridiculous this idea of probability was, Schrodinger designed his famous cat experiment. He placed a poison bottle, a radioactive substance, and a cat inside a box. The rule was simple. If the radioactive substance decayed, the poison bottle would break and the cat would die. If it didn't decay, the cat would survive. Don't worry, this was just a thought experiment, so no animals were harmed. According to quantum physics, until you open the box, the radioactive substance is both decayed and undecayed. This means that until you open the box, the cat is both dead and alive at the same time. We've reached the end of our journey. I put a lot of effort into the video. You can support me by subscribing.